My name is Victoria Tiazzi, and I am a nurse informatician and researcher at New York Presbyterian Hospital with over 25 years experience in healthcare and information technology. And my program of research centers on the summarization and contextualization of patient-generated health data to support clinical decision-making and reduce documentation burden. Uh, today, I would like to discuss remote patient monitoring and leveraging clinical workflows uh, for optimal success. From my experience with the rapid acceleration of remote patient monitoring in the past year, I would like to share with you some considerations for the optimal implementation. But first, I'd like to begin with what I'm referring to when I say remote patient monitoring. Uh, first, it must use digital tools. This can be in the form of sensors, medically approved devices, and biometrics that are collected outside of the care setting all while the patient is either at home or goes about their daily activities. I'm not referring to data that are collected in the clinic prior to the patient seeing a provider. And it's not only the data collected by the patient, but uh, we'll also talk about the upload, download, and most importantly, the transmission to a clinician or other healthcare professional for a review, surveillance, or simply incorporation into an in-person or virtual care visit. And since it's sometimes used interchangeably, uh, remote patient monitoring might be a used alongside telehealth virtual visits, uh, but not always. And although remote patient monitoring is reimbursable, it's coded very differently than telehealth. Uh, so it does not always equate uh, with telehealth visits. So just some things to keep in mind um, as we talk through uh, some considerations in using remote patient monitoring and clinical workflows. So throughout this presentation, we'll talk about the perspectives of not only the patients and caregivers, uh, clinicians, uh, but also uh, some considerations for designers and developers of remote patient monitoring solutions. In leveraging clinical workflows in remote patient monitoring, it's important to consider the benefits that we're hoping to realize. First is the remote aspect in tracking patients from afar and the ability to monitor progress and potentially reduce readmissions or transfers to a higher level of care. Similarly is the support of aging in place initiatives that allow older or disabled individuals to live at home longer and ultimately receive their care from home. Remote patient monitoring provides an understanding of what happens between visits, and this can be longitudinal for chronic disease patients or episodic for patients that might be voluntarily collecting their own information outside of medical care or simply for prevention purposes. And this last benefit has become increasingly important over the past year, the opportunity to decrease documentation burden so to create efficiencies, support clinician well-being uh, by incorporating data directly into the EHR. On the flip side, there are a number of challenges. Although my focus is on workflows, these are worthwhile to have as a part of the implementation conversations. A big concern is the education of patients and caregivers thinking about both the health literacy and the tech literacy of the individual. Ensuring support for patients may require work on either the part of the organization or the RPM vendor. Another issue is the payment for devices. And also included here is the payment for phone plans, access to Wi-Fi, uh, et cetera. And one other big concern is connected to the devices used to RPM and the lack of reliability and validity studies. This can lead to a mistrust of the data by patients, which could impact their use of the devices and the sharing of their data, but also providers and their willingness to use the data within clinical practice. Uh, connected to trust is the challenge in maintaining the feedback loop with the patients. So, if patients are providing data and expecting someone to look at it, 
ensuring that there are providers and clinicians that are responding and providing that feedback uh, to ensure continued, continued use. This can certainly be problematic in busy practice environments. And last, but certainly not least, is the challenge of connectivity, which is more on the patient side and whether their sensors can connect to devices, mobile health apps, and if there's adequate Wi-Fi for data upload. And then very related but different is the interoperability concerns. And can the data from the device get to the EHR or whatever mechanism is used to integrate the data into the workflows? We'll talk more about that in just a moment. Now let's turn specifically to workflow considerations. To address the clinical workflows, we'll think about the considerations in these two streams. Uh, the best way to introduce remote patient monitoring activities into care, and then secondly, how the data are used within clinical care. First up is the introduction of remote patient monitoring into care practices and the items that must be addressed. First is thinking about how patients will be identified as candidates. It's important to assess preferences of the patients, their abilities, and also their needs. Um, this will need to be a part of someone's workflow. Is this on the part of the RPM vendor? Is it the clinic staff? Or can existing EHR data be extracted for information on this assessment? Next is the onboarding processes. Patients will need instructions and training. Uh, and the organization may need policies and procedures which to follow. Uh, can some of this work be done by the RPM solution? Uh, primary language must also be considered during these onboarding processes. And very importantly, this may also be a part of team-based care. Multiple team members may be a part of this effort. Uh, perhaps the registrar or uh, the person at the clinic that is checking in patients uh, might need to have knowledge of these activities and multiple clinicians may need to use the data that are generated. So once all that is known, it's critical to understand their information needs, who else might need to see the data and how, all taking, this, taking to the next stream of work, which is the use of the data. So once the data are collected, uh, via remote patient monitoring, there are important considerations to ensure that the data are used most efficiently. First is to get the right data or the needed data and not all of the data. There is a tendency to create solutions that show all possible data collected. But what's most helpful is to provide just enough data for the clinical team to intervene. This ties back to that understanding of information needs of the care team members uh, why the remote patient monitoring is being implemented in the first place. Uh, next is to consider the use within clinical decision support tools and potentially nursing symptom management workflows. To be of most use, a method that will reduce the burden of clinicians that need to search for a particular piece of patient-generated health data will be most helpful. Then, how to present the data in a way that is most relevant for the clinicians. So summarizing, contextualizing, and visualizing the data in a way that decreases the cognitive load. And note that this may be different for each member of the care team that needs to see the data. This is not a one size fits all approach. And lastly, thinking about patient reported outcomes, there may be a need to combine the patient's answers uh, to the tools used to collect uh, PROs with patient-generated health data. Again, looking for ways to synthesize the data that doesn't add to more steps within the clinical workflows. Closely linked to how the data are used are the interoperability considerations. In the current literature on patient-generated health data integrations, there are some key areas that are sometimes overlooked. First is thinking about the active versus pa passive transfer of the data. Meaning in active, the patient has to do something to get the data to the device and passive, meaning that the data are automatically transferred to the device without any work on behalf of the patient. 
Now, I just described the most frequent thinking around uh, active passive, but I want to raise a few other aspects to this that are critical. Although the patient may actively or passively move their data to the device, that doesn't account what might need to happen in order to get the data into the clinical workflows or potentially to the EHR. So it's not only thinking about the active and passive transfer to the device, but also the active or passive transfer to the EHR. Both must be considered. Then similarly, while most of the literature discusses the work on behalf of the patient, there is little on the work required by the clinician. So does the clinician need to actively do something to get the data into their workflows? Or hopefully the data and information are passively included as a part of their routine documentation review. So the data integration has a number of aspects that must all be working optimally to contribute to optimal use. So in summary, here are some of the recommended actions. Begin with exploring information needs. What problem are you trying to solve and who needs to be a part of the solution? Recognizing that there may be multiple care team members involved. An assessment of the patient population to address patient preferences, including any educational needs, and recognizing that not all patients may want to use remote patient monitoring and may have specific educational needs that need to be addressed. A deep dive into an examination of the clinician workflows. Again, recognizing that there might be multiple workflows to consider. And last but not least, establishing a technical framework for the integration of patient-generated health data, ensuring that it is efficient and allows for ease, ease of use on both sides. So not only the patient, but also the clinician. Recognizing the active and passive transfer considerations on both sides. By taking a careful look and uh, looking at each of these uh, actions uh, very critically within the context of the practice or environment in which a remote patient monitoring will be implemented should allow for continued successful use of remote patient monitoring solutions. Thank you, and I'm happy to answer any questions.